what does it make you feel? What does it make you think of? And if that's the inspiring motive behind writing the music or improvising, that's that's another way. And sometimes it's it's just making up fun stuff. The amount of times we've made up the dumbest, silliest songs just in the car or whatever, just waiting for something. We have songs about poodles. <laughs> Just just because we hear something and we think it's fun, or we just go for it, you know. And... Thanks for joining me, Linda and Fabian, um, the dynamic duo. Um, uh, yeah, Linda is an amazing bass player and Fabian an incredible... Um, keyboard and piano player and both wonderful composers. So thanks for joining me for these three questions. The first time that we've done a, well, I've done a duo before, so. Fabinda, just think of us as Fabinda. Okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> I will now. Some... The first question, uh, why do you have music in your life? Uh, for me, it's definitely a form of therapy in some ways. Um, uh, it kind of has been um, for most of my life. Uh, I feel like when I started off learning music as a child, it was at the same time something that we kind of had to do with music lessons and like a, a, a good thing for, for, for kids to learn. That, that was what my parents kind of, how my parents saw it. And my mother never had the opportunity to learn music or piano when she was a child. And so she always wanted that for us. So in some ways there's this thing that, well, okay, well, let's do piano lessons, you have to do piano lessons. But then in amongst that, there was definitely a, a, a platform that was kind of self-expression, but also being able to sort of be quiet on your own and work on some of these, these, these things, listen to the music, think about how you, it makes you feel, that that was a big emphasis to some of the music classes that we started off with. And I think that that was really great because that introduced us to the concept of what does it actually mean to us? What does it make you feel? What do you see when you, when you hear music? What do you visualize? You know, that sort of thing. Um, and was, then... Yeah. Well, was, it, was that something that you uh, sort of consciously did in your lessons or when you were younger? Or was it just yeah. something that... Yeah, well, when I was younger, it was something that was fostered in some of the Yamaha music lessons, the group music lessons particularly, and we had some great great um, teachers who were just really, um, really made us think about how, you know, how does it make you feel when I play this, do a dance, or, you know, what kind of dance would you do to it, you know? Mm. Um, and it's a shame that as you kind of progress, it, it felt like as I progressed through, like, the higher levels of piano and, and music, it became more this thing of, like, well, you got to do your exams. You got to you got to do this. You got to do you know all all of these things, which is important, you know. And I think good to learn some sort of discipline. Um, but at the same time, it um, sometimes when you when you forget these other fundamentals of how does it make you feel, how does it, what do you think about when you hear this music? It's um, you kind of lose a bit of that sparkle, you know, to to some extent you know? yeah i mean um, i mean imagine if you had to do like grade seven ameb piano and you had to do the technical stuff and then say okay now dance me that piece of music or you know <laughs> express to me how you feel i mean that would be that would be you'd be, become much more creative probably more rounded musicians probably yeah i, I would think so and and just just the concept of, of having a context that's more than just a grade or a, you know a, ch a check mark off the list of things to do or achieve you know it's it becomes a little bit more than that and there's maybe a bit more meaning tied to it rather than just um yeah just kind of benchmarks that you kind of um aspire towards you know for mm. sure um and then you know later on it became when I started playing more ensembles, it was definitely like a great feeling to be able to work towards something with a group and, and build something collectively. And then further on later, being able to improvise and improvise with other musicians, it means it, and another added thing of how to cooperate, how to problem solve on the fly, how to make things work uh, with a group of people 
and and build something, and, which I think is quite special. Mm. Fabian, why why do you have music in your life? Well, <clears throat> uh, if if I were to answer that question uh, specifically to the question, I, I guess I'd have to boil it down to my sister. Uh, and, and, and my father and my mom, uh, those three people. I, in Cuba, uh, when I was growing up, my sister was the biggest thing in my life. Uh, she was my hero. Anything she did, I wanted to do. Uh, we were Same. before yeah. Sorry? Same. Yeah, my sister was a huge influence on, on me too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're uh, four and a half years apart. She's four and a half years older than me. And she started taking lessons from a woman in her 90s who lived around the corner from our apartment. Her name was Kuku. And uh, immediately I wanted to start taking lessons too. So that's what, that's, I guess that's how I have music in my life. Now, why I have music in my life, it, it, it's, it's I've, I've tried to not have music in my life out of frustration with music. Yeah. And it's just, it, it didn't work out. I, I, I realized how, how much of a necessity it is for me to have that emotional outlet. Life can be very uh, confusing, as we're all experiencing right now. It can be very joyous. Uh, it's very abstract. And I feel uh, the, the way that I can find that, um, that balance in my life is to have that outlet, that abstract outlet, because just stuff is way too confusing <laughs> to put into words. Mm. Um, and also, you know, celebrating things about life. Like Cuban culture very much uses music as a way of celebrating uh, living, uh, and not just Cuban culture, you know, throughout the world. Um, so, yeah, mainly for me, it, it's a medicine, and, and how Linda said, it's, it's a it's therapeutic for me. Mm. I, as much as I enjoy playing for an audience, uh, I think what really makes it worth worth it for me is coming home after a tour and no one you're not around <laughs> no one's around and I just get to play the piano and and just for myself and just you know let it out mm. um, yeah yeah, yeah the, the, the second question is how do you make music I don't know <laughs> I mean it, it's called music theory uh, it's still a theory um, I think that's another reason why we, why I have music. I have a feeling it's why you have music in your life too. It's a never-ending uh, endeavor. Um, there's always more uh, to how to make the music, how to understand the music, how to interpret it, uh, the technology with uh, electronic uh, music that's happening. So, I mean, to, to specifically answer the question. Um, how, how I make music, I play the piano, but I also try to mess with the piano as much as humanly possible by adding all sorts of electronic things to it and physical things. Like, um, yeah. And Linda? Um, yeah, I think, uh, how do I make music? Well, part of it is also what, what defines music in, in general, because I, you know, when you think of it in everyday life, there's just, um, so many elements to sound that that I still kind of think of as music, you know, everything from when my niece was a, a baby and she would have these like babbles that were just so beautiful and so tuneful. Like like I would transcribe some of that stuff and and it was it was ridiculous, you know, she'd just be babbling and cooing. She's doing all these giant stuff changing. So it's like... <laughs> well, it's, it's not far off, you know, still things that she would make up. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's kind of profound in many ways. Um, but um, how do I make music? Well, it can depend um, if it's if it's you know something that I'm working on specifically, then maybe there's more of a method to it and. I, I may try and for my own sanity have some sort of organized approach to it um, in amongst just what I aesthetically like and then am aspi aspiring to. Um, you know, there's the idea of, you know, again, what, what does it make you feel? What does it make you think of? And if that's the inspiring motive behind writing the music or improvising, that's, that's another way. Um, and sometimes it's it's just making up fun stuff. The amount of times we've made up 
the dumbest, silliest songs just in the car or whatever, just waiting for something. Or we hear something and it, you know, I, I wouldn't even begin to say some of the things that we've, we've made or just sometimes we're just... We have songs about poodles. <laughs> Just, just because we hear something and we think it's fun, or we just go for it, you know. And you know, um, hanging out with some of my nieces, like sometimes we make up songs together. And horses in the mud. Yeah, that's yeah. right. We made we made a hit children's song that'll be out soon. <laughs> and it's already hit. It's not out, but it's a hit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> our niece is going to make us millions. Um, <laughs> but um, and just to see her face light up that she created something, you know, I was like. You know, what's a lyric? What do you want to? What What do you want this to be about? You know, so yeah, um, it kind of depends. Depends on what we're feeling, what context. But um, and it's all music. I mean, some of it may be more crafted than others. Um, stuff that we would release or something. But then there's other things that we just want to do because it's fun and and um, we want to express ourselves. Yeah. Music for fun. There's a concept. <laughs> <laughs>so uh, so many talented young musicians right now I mean um, there's so much access to music um, for better or worse you know when you think of streaming and, and um, it's not like how it used to be of like you literally have to find a record order it or a CD and wait for it to come pay you know your thirty dollars for it or twenty dollars for it you know um, and now it's literally you can almost find anything that you want online so some of these younger musicians, I'm just seeing so much talent and um, and that does excite me, you know, um, and it, it pushes us, you know, some of our students who are um, doing amazing things with various electronics or, or technology and, and pushing themselves, you know, it, it, that's exciting to me. Um, my, my hope is just that the industry kind of keeps up with that and still pays musicians fairly so that we have a good um, equitable <laughs> system <laughs> that allows us to do this and, and be compensated for it. Um, you know, um, it, it's it's great that we have the accessibility and all the information. The only thing is, yeah, how do we keep it equitable? How do we keep the information also? Um, I, I feel there's a lot of misinformation out there, you know, when it comes to um, everything <laughs> um, <laughs> anyone can have a youtube video on anything and um, and i think uh, i just think it, it's it's exciting to have all all this available to us and and that's what excites me i, I just hope that we can kind of still keep our heads a little with, with the industry and um for the survival really of and sustainability of the industry as a whole and for these other institutions to come up. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I mean, it does feel feel like now, especially, and I'm sure, and I'm, I know that you guys are feeling it, unable to tour and perform where, you know, that's the that's the main income stream and, and also, you know, I guess, you know, expressive outlet and sort of that not being able to come in through recorded music. Um, mm -hmm like it used to be, um, it's pretty, yeah, it's something needs to change. Mm -hmm. uh, because I, don't, I think most people just think that, you, well, I don't think they connect it. They can get, you know, they can get stream this music for free or pre, almost, almost free. Um, and they think, great, but they don't actually connect. Well, what, what is the artist getting? Did the artist just, the artist just didn't give you the, didn't just give you the music. Um, yeah, that, that connection, I think needs to, I think more people need to kind of, uh, speak out about it because I don't think any, everyone understands that connection. Exactly. Yeah. It's, all, it's already been made for the consumption and the realities of putting together an album. What does it take, you know, step by step, you know, most, most 
and most people who aren't involved in, in that, they don't see that. And they don't see the people who are behind the scenes of the engineers who are incredible and what they do, you know. Um, mm. And yet, you know, no one would necessarily know on Spotify um, or doing services who these people are without liner notes, you know. The one uh, that's at the front of my mind right now are your birds. Um, Australian bird songs are very unique. Mm. <laughs> um, I've, been, I've been going out to um, Star Swamp, which is near here, and uh, you know, in the beginning of the day and the end of the day. So I mean, it sounds like a like an orchestra. It's like a a symphony, um, and that's something that I've always been uh, interested in. Just the the natural world and music and and the connection between the two. Aside, aside from that, um, electronic music is something that I'm always uh, interested in. I have a, a new toy, an art odyssey that I'm uh, messing with. Uh, but what I'm really, really excited about is, uh, and we were speaking about this uh, before, is uh, conducting. I'm, I'm taking conducting lessons uh, from the great uh, Jessica Gethin and I've, I've studied the instruments in the orchestra. I mean, not nearly as much as the players themselves. But, you know, I, I have a kind of an understanding of the instruments, but I, I had never really looked into uh, that one person in front of all the musicians kind of being the glue. Mm. Uh, and it's giving me a, a different sort of uh, perspective on, on, on music. Uh, all of these uh, orchestral scores that I've studied I never studied them with the the performance in mind. I was just looking at, at the data, you know, just the, the music. Yeah, structure. right. Mm. Uh, and as far as composers, uh, David Ludwig, um, he's a composer from Philadelphia that um, I'm just I'm his biggest fan. <laughs> I've really gotten into his, his music. Uh, I've, I've yet to speak to him or anything like that. Uh, quite frankly, because I'm, I'm a little intimidated. <laughs> I should, there's something about his music that really, really resonates with me. And uh, I, I've been in music now for 30 years. Um, so it, I really, um, I really uh, cherish those moments where you, you have that excitement about mm. some new thing you heard. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Musicians are, are human.